So hello everyone, lovely to see you today and um, yeah it's wow it's been such an intense week, I don't know if you've been feeling it too, we'll have some time at the end of the call to check in with everyone but um, yeah it's felt pretty relentless um, the last couple of weeks uh, but then um, you know, one of the keys for Venus retrograde is the 33, the, the understanding and the revelation. And I feel like I really had that um, experience actually in the last few days. And so, so we're going to be, I'll be talking about that, like, my personal revelation you may have had some as well <laughs> um some dreams that have come in and also um uh kiki and i tuned into the dragonfly uh the other day and we did some sound healing around that so uh we're going to do that a bit of sound healing whatever wants to come through at the end of the um just some information about what's going on with the Lion's Gate and the Venus retrograde and uh, what we need to know basically in these challenging times. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay, so let me share um, my presentation here. Okay, so uh, we're in the Venus retrograde. Um, some of us have been doing the mudra practice live, or you may have adopted the mudras yourself in some way. So Venus is going retrograde back through the 29th gene key, devotion, the fourth forgiveness, the seventh virtue, and 33 um, revelation. So um, that practice is every Monday, 8.30 until September, that you can join in or there's a, a, a video in the classes of the mudras. So you can take the mudras and create your own practice if you wanted to as well. Um, so every year there's this thing called the Lion's Gate. I'm sure most of you have heard of it. Um, it begins on the 28th of July, just after the Galactic New Year. And it coincides with the rising of the star Sirius um, from, from Egypt, but it may actually be other places as well. But um, I know that it rises over the Nile. And I think in ancient times, before they built, built the dam, um, it marked like the flooding of the Nile where the fertility would return to the land as the Nile flooded. Um, so it's a time of great fertility, really, the Lion's Gate. And it, it always happens in Leo in this powerful um, energy of creativity and self and leadership. Um, and it ends tomorrow on the 8th of August. So if you're able to have a little ceremony or something, it's going to be like the pinnacle point. Okay, so on Sunday, the 13th, um, is the Venus star point. So this is when Venus comes conjunct the sun so I saw Venus last night very high up in the sky so she's still visible but as we approach um, this Venus star point she she disappears for a while for just for a few weeks in in what's called the inferior conjunction um, and it said that she goes into the underworld because we can no longer see her from earth and then when she emerges again, she's going to be the morning star. Um, so this is an important point. The Venus star point marks the like energy of the next nine months ahead. Um, and we're going to have a ceremony. This will be on Sunday from 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. Pacific. 
So bring, we're going to do creative journaling um, around the lion's gate and all of this. So, um, and the Venus star point. So bring a journal along to that. Um, okay, and then on Monday, we'll do the mudra practice again. Now, you'll know if you've been with me on the Venus journey that last time we did seven gates of Inanna. And these are the visible gates. I, you can see Venus from Earth when these seven gates happen. But there's actually nine gates and the two other ones are invisible. And I feel really drawn to um, do those this time. Um, so the first one is going to be um, on the, on, I think that's meant to say Thursday, the 16th, actually, um, where the new moon and the first gate, which is, will be the star chakra. So the star chakra is above our head, about six inches above our head, and it gives us access to the cosmos and the multidimensional other world that we talked about last week through the Celtic stories. But I mean, every culture in the world has these, you know, we access this other world, this other dimensional place. So what we're going to do next Monday is we're going to do a Celtic journey into the other world. Um, and this is going to open us up to this first um star chakra gate where the moon and venus come conjunct which as i say is also when the new moon happens so it's going to be really really powerful and these words came to me to describe this next pathway of venus for nine months as infinite unfurling bliss i love that <laughs> and um and it, like every single one of these Venus journeys is different. Like they're always in different parts of the zodiac, in different gene keys. So no cycle is ever the same as another cycle. And it's like, so it's an absolutely unique opportunity to walk each or dance, if you like, each of these Venus cycles. And Venus herself is the initiator. So I'm just a guide really through it. It's Venus herself who you are inviting to open this infinite unfurling bliss. You know, Venus is the planet of beauty and love um, and all good things really. So she's a great ally to have. Uh, okay, so that's gonna be, I know it's Wednesday there, but I think it's Thursday. It's on the calendar anyway. Um, and then um, just to say there's two other things have, that I feel really complement um, what's going on with our Venus journey that I'm leading. There's a new 40-day practice started today called Unleash Your Life with Jennifer um, and also the new Human Diplomat course with Kristen, which is all about leadership. And there's various yoga offerings with Tara and Susan um, and Body Talk with Danny. And what I love about the offerings is they always seem to wonderfully kind of dovetail into this perfect, um, yeah, just what we need in this moment to hold our, our position, really, <laughs> hold our stability. Okay, so this is the chart of the Venus star point in Leo. You can see it's happening on the 13th of August, uh, which is sun, the Sunday coming up. So I'm not going to go deeply into the chart, but two things of note, well, three things actually. First of all, um, you can see Venus is conjunct the sun at 20 degrees Leo, 28 minutes. So if you have some any planets in Leo, by the way, this is a very activating time for you. Um, if you have them in the other fixed signs, Aquarius, Taurus, and um, Aquarius, Taurus, Leo. I always forget when I do these things. Anyway, 
the fixed signs is where the intense energy is going to happen. Um, and this is Gene Key 4, line 2, which is all about forgiveness. So I'm going to talk a bit more about that and give some quotes from Gene Key 4. The other thing that's really amazing is we have um, a conjunction of Pallas Athena, Mercury and Mars um, in Virgo. So Mercury and Mars are in Gene Key 47 which is all about transmutation, transfiguration. And so this is a powerful time of like kind of standing up for yourself. This is what I believe in. This is what I want to say to the world. So um, we might feel like this rising in us that we really want to speak our truth right now with, with um, you know, especially Mercury. Well, just that combination, Mercury, Pallas, Athena are very much that like, oof, go get it energy. Uh, and then with Mercury, they combine around the issue of communication. And then the other thing that's quite interesting here is we have um, Vesta, the priestess, with Astraea, um, the sacred artist, the bringer of the golden new age. So here we have um, the use of intention and prayer of the priestess, the use of creative arts of Astraea to bring in these new divine feminine energies into our consciousness and into the planet. So that's the three things uh, that I kind of really notice um, going on there. Oh, hang on a sec. Okay, so Venus star point in Leo. So this next nine months, as I mentioned before, is called the meta goddess phase in Leo. So what, what fascinates me about um, Venus is her numerology and her sacred geometry are kind of off the planet, really. <laughs> you know, she's creating a five-pointed star as she does all these things. And um, But this nine-month thing is interesting because it's an echo of the human gestation period. And so in these nine months is actually the possibility to re-encode our physical body, um, which takes nine months to do a physical re-encoding. Um, and uh, we, we kind of begin at the mental level of challenging our thoughts and noticing our thoughts. And then we move into the astral level. And then finally, you get this spirit penetrating matter as we move into the physical. So the Venus star point is, as I say, 20 degrees Leo in Gene Key 4 line 2 forgiveness. And then the star chakra gate is Thursday the 16th of August. And this gives us access to the cosmic realms. And this is Gene Key 4 line 1. Um, so Gene Key 4 moves from intolerance to understanding to forgiveness. So this is from the Gene Keys book about the, um, the nature of the shadow of intolerance. The underlying nature of all the shadow states is fear. In the case of the fourth shadow, fear is projected onto others and then reinforced through taking a defensive and sometimes offensive mental position. This is how intolerance is created, and it is sometimes extremely subtle. Intolerance bases its position on opinion rather than fact. If you took the time to examine the other side of the argument, you would immediately understand that your opinion is rooted in deep-seated emotional fear of something. So what are we intolerant of? That's a good thing to notice at the moment. Who do we feel that we really do not want in our aura ever again? 
<laughs> and if we're feeling that, then we're feeling the shadow of intolerance. Okay, and then we have the gift of understanding. So I've just pulled these out, but I really recommend you read Gene Key 4. It's absolutely mind-blowing. When the fourth gift is freed from having to solve your existence, it finally comes into its real genius to play with the patterns of existence and arrange them in new and original ways. And that's what I really feel we're doing, actually. We're playing with patterns and we're arranging them in new and, in, and original ways. When you have the feeling of visceral understanding deep in your belly, your mind is no longer hampered by the need to defend your own viewpoint. In fact, you realize that all logical formula can be manipulated to prove or disprove anything. The higher frequency of such understandings also brings with it the urge to be of service to the world. And you can use the mental alacrity of the fourth gift to follow the dictates of your higher self. This newfound genius at seeing the underlying patterns of life also affords you direct access into another aspect of this fourth gift, which is the ability to understand people. Okay, so I'm just going to stop that for the moment. So, um, so yeah, I wanted to share um, just kind of this revelation I've had about what's going on. Um, so who knows where these things start, but I had a dream um, on the Galactic New Year, 26th of July, where um, a rhino was charging Kiki and I, <laughs> and we were running through a garden, and then it became quite fun and playful. And um, there were all these sort of rock piles that we could jump up and the rhino was, so it was being quite playful. It stopped feeling sort of like it wanted to kill us and was more like playing with us. So I went into the dream arc and, um, and the rhino is really interesting. It's called a changer. It's in the group of animals called changers. And um, it's about being very focused, like getting things down to one thing that you want to focus on. Um, so it's almost like Gene Key 23 in a way, that simplicity, like find the quintessence of it. And the quintessence that came to me was that I, and, and I feel all of us, need to build a foundation of self-love like a solid foundation of self-love um, and everything else, our relationships, our family, our work is built on this foundation of self-love. So I'm a line one, three um, in the 47 line one is my life work. So I feel I have this kind of desire to build the foundation and, the, and when the foundation is self-love, everything else becomes stable whereas when we're not in self-love which may express itself as insecurity or jealousy or um all kinds of ways then we're really shaky you know it's like everything can get knocked over it's like we're buffeted by our emotions and the winds and everything going, other people's emotions, other people's projections, everything's kind of like firing at us. Um, but when we, if we have this foundation of self-love, it's very stable. So I went into the changes the other day and one of the big changes is the dragonfly. And um, Richard talks so beautifully about it. And he talks about how the dragonfly kind of comes out of the chrysalis and it's clinging on to its little reed. And this reed is like the things we're still clinging on to for our security. And what actually happens is the water in its body, which is a metaphor for emotion, is what starts to stretch its wings out 
and then the sun dries the wings and then finally it takes flight it's able to let go of its fear and and take off and it's a very moving story um and he talks about the big change we're in and and i kind of realized you know, like so many people and myself at this incredible emotional intensity all the time it's just relentless and you know, Richard talks about it. it's, it's not going to get any easier for us. You know, it's going to, this intensity as the world changes leading into the 2027 is one of the dates we have. It's going to get more and more intense. So unless we have the secure foundation of self-love, we, we will literally just be buffeted in and out of chaos all the time. Um, so that feels like a really good thing to aim for um, through this Venus cycle. And I feel as, as a person guiding it, what I want to um, do is go through each of the gates. There'll be nine gates and through each of them contemplate self-love through that gate as part of our process and to do creative writing around that so each of us gets something personal and special from that that we can share with each other as well um yeah so um i'm going to read at the at the end of the the healing uh, i then went into sacred seal four which mentions this dragonfly wing and the iridescent light. So I'm going to read that at the end of the sound healing. Um, and just before we go into the sound healing, though, I wondered if Kristen, who's hopefully still here, she had this incredible thing happen with the dragonflies in Mexico. And even though it was about her group there, I feel like it was a prophecy for all of us. So... I just wanted you to share that that little moment, um, Kristen, if you would, of, of what happened. Ah, thank you, Allison. Hello, everyone. Uh, yeah, so um, I actually can do a little visualization of it. So, um, so we could just drop in. Uh, I was in Mexico um, at a regenerative farm and um, the, it was 600 acres uh, that is 100% off the grid. And I was there for a um, workshop. It's a, it's, a, um, uh, I'm, it's a collaborator for some work that I'm doing in Mexico. And I was there in a workshop um, with about 40 other humans from all over the world. Um, and uh, ages like, 15 to I would say 35 was the the bulk of it I was definitely the oldest one there by a couple of decades and um so yeah so the the, the experience was for five days we worked on the land and uh you know we really dropped into this we were led by um this agra forest um, agro um, syntropic expert from Brazil and uh, we just uh, dropped into the land and connected with it and nurtured it um, you know for what it really truly um, uh, wanted what it was asking for and uh, so you know we started gently um, clearing the land and it was about an acre and then we in the debris and putting it in piles to reuse it uh, and then we started um, tilling the land and um, and then creating um, you know the the rows for the the um, the plantings and um, and so um, you know moving forward to the last day when we actually did all of the plantings and really understood the symbiotic um, integration of, of different types of plants and how they work below the soil um, to support one another in this very beautiful familial system. 
and um, and then covering it with their the dead leaves, knowing that that's like the DNA um, from their families. So that gets integrated back into the soil and into their roots. And so it's this real, very symbiotic um, experience. So we went out there um, in the evening of the last day um, and to celebrate. And, uh, and through that celebration process, we had buckets of seeds. So the, the, um, the rows were all planted and then between the rows was, were the aisleways. And so we planted all of these seeds and we were just kind of dancing around, just um, uh, sprinkling them out of our hands. And so as we're doing this and the music's playing um, over the entire field came these dragonflies. And it was like, they just hovered over us. And it was this, this like synarchy of, you know, of mother earth, of, you know, the nurturing of mother earth and the planting and the honoring of mother earth and the regeneration of mother earth with the humans, you know, real, very much integrated into it. And then all of a sudden just the, the dragonflies came over. Um, and then as soon as the dragonflies came over, then it just started sprinkling. So it was just this light sprinkle that was like watering the plants. It was watering us as we're dancing through the fields with the dragonflies. And it was one of the most um, high vibrational experiences with a group of people that I've ever experienced. Um, so yeah, it was just really beautiful. And we got it on video and it was, it was just such a, um, such a true conviction to this work that we're doing um, as we connect with each other as a familial system, you know, in community that, you know, we're all, you know, we're all part of this beautiful system. So the dragonfly showed up and they were just so illuminating. It was, it was, it was beyond fabulous. Um, so thank you so much, Allison, for asking me to share that story. Well, it's had a very powerful effect on me, and um, I'm kind of intrigued as well. Like the, it feels like the plant kingdoms are really coming in, as well as the animals. Um, I've had a few flower essence encounters. I won't talk about now, but it feels like nature and us are are merging. So holding this dream of all these, imagine all these dragonflies over this new regenerative project and in flying over us as well. Um, and I want to invite you, if it feels right, we were doing the virtue mudra earlier and it felt like dragonfly wings. So imagining the dragonfly holding on to its it's reed and these are its wings they're still wet they've come out of the little chrysalis and they're still drying off and to bring all of our powerful emotions into this practice to offer our powerful emotions to the sound healing right now and that we can stay in the understanding of how these powerful emotional experiences are part of what we are, we have to experience. This is what we signed up for. And they're carrying us towards something beautiful, something, they're carrying us towards freedom, the dragonfly, taking to the air. So as we make the sounds, I invite you to, in your own space, if you want to make sounds, if you want to move your hands in a dance, that, that we, in the group, we will feel the vibration of each of our movements, or we can simply be here and receive and notice. We might even feel uncomfortable this is a strange experience we're having here. 
but just being open to the healing power of, of the voice, of sound, of the human. Kasila nu maratelu marasito marishi nuru tatu marushi na kora nita nuru porajita isumbua kanka kua kantiran takan kora takan tsrosh na baroku rakitan yapura isabutanai atoma ya atoma isotora kanio la balita kora shela kama kulitai 
Simbura kakan yutura kila mushalitai Sura pala kilo numala tela koya ki Masikila kanakora mala kwalisia narash la bola kantiala Yabali sambolush la bola kantila kwansila baka Yale pintara huara hila bala insala ola ali ikinshila ba We can't hear you, Allison. From the fourth sacred seal. We invoke the frequency of iridescence, the holy light of this fourth ray. Unusually bright light, fiercely bright, rainbow kaleidoscope of flickering, fizzing electrical light, the light that breaks into our world from the beyond, the light of the dragonfly's wing, light of the secret mineral realm, iridescent light that suddenly appears in the dark and stuns us into silence into all. We feel the charge of iridescence as it ignites us, ignites in us as it sizzles around us, penetrates us, trembling and quaking and snaking around the base of our spine, enlivening all deadness, shocking numbness into life, bursting our dullness into living flames. We relax deeper as the iridescent light spirals up our spine, opening its links, targeting pain, targeting blockages, magnetized by heavy spaces, tornadoing through our sinew and muscle and bone, opening our energy body, bridging the realms of physical, astral, and mental. We allow your iridescent grace to spin within us, to visit every corner and crevice of our being, to seek out our pain, our long forgotten baggage. We cannot help but feel enthused, we cannot help but be awakened, rivified by this light of epiphany. We cannot help but be inspired, illuminated, refreshed, moved, provoked into action, out of stasis. We embrace the quickening that this light of iridescence inevitably brings in its wake. We invoke it, we long for this life force, this youthful, inextinguishable vigor. Ah, how blissful we feel when your smile touches us this deeply. Mm, so feeling that iridescent light inside us, allowing the emotional intensity of the Venus retrograde, the Lion Gate, to penetrate deeply into our being and to hold this circle together of healing and transformation.
And in the Venus star ceremony on Sunday, I'm going to do the fifth sacred seal, which is forgiveness. So it'll lead, lead in from this as well. Hmm. Are you complete, Kiki? Yeah, right. thank you. <laughs> Ah, so we've got some 20 minutes left just to open floor to, um, yeah, just love to hear if you're experiencing this emotional intensity, um, how things are going for you, um, any revelations you've had during the Venus retrograde so far. Anything really, anything you'd like to share is very welcome. Um, well, I'll share something. Um, it's quite an open-ended question, was that, Alison? <laughs> 